What up, party people? Terry Warfield. Hope you're having a good day so far. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I'm a filmmaker. I like making motivational vlogs, and I love talking about all things tech. So if you like that type of stuff, make sure you hit subscribe to the notification squad. Drop a hashtag up in here if you're up in the comments. So today, I'm going to wrap up, give you my final verdict on the Galaxy S10. I've had this phone for, count it up, 37 days now, and I feel like... I can give you a well-rounded idea of what I really think about this phone. So a few things I wanna throw out there. This is gonna be longer than my average video, okay? So just, just don't complain, it's gonna be longer than average. Also, I'm not following any type of itinerary. This is all off the head. I'm really just kind of giving you my perspective of what using this phone for 37 days now has been like for me. And if I regret switching from the Note 9, also if I think it's a pickup or not a pickup. So let's get into it. So a lot of you guys know, probably from watching my videos, that leaving the Galaxy Note 9 was hard for me. That was literally like almost the perfect phone. I guess let me tell you why I decided to switch from the Note 9. Not because I thought the S10 was necessarily better, it's because I'm a tech junkie. I'm just being honest. I would have found every single way to justify getting rid of my Note 9 for the S10 if I didn't do it, so I just went ahead and did it. And there's a few things that I missed, like I, I missed the S Pen, and I think that's really about it. I mean, S10 is pretty much everything the Note 9 is. It's minus the S Pen and the S Pen features, which I've come to live without. But I guess let me tell you about the stuff I love about this phone, and then I'll go to the stuff I hate about it. The first thing that I love about this phone, honestly, I didn't pick the Plus, I picked the regular one. And coming from the Note 9, having a huge phone that you had to lug around like all day, every day, Going back to a regular size phone that still has a big nice screen on it, but it's still slim enough to slide into a pocket. Like I can't lie, that's been refreshing. <laughs> the second thing that I absolutely love about the Galaxy S10 is the display, man. Listen, it's no question that Samsung makes the best displays. And the Note 9 display was absolutely gorgeous. But you honestly don't realize how good the Galaxy S10 screen is until you look at one in person. You can watch all the videos, you can look at all the pictures online. Until you're able to see one in person, you won't understand it. Clarity of the screen, the brightness, the colors, the just, like it doesn't even seem like it's a display. It just feels like you have an organic piece of paper right up underneath your fingertips. And I can never get enough of looking at this screen. And while I'm talking about the screen, I guess I might as well talk about the little punch hole. So to me, it hasn't been a big deal. Notches are not a big deal. Yes, it was nice having a notchless display on the note, and it's never been any situation where I was like, yo, I wish I didn't have this little pinhole in the screen. If anything, I kind of like it. It kind of gives it like a high tech look to it. And I love how Samsung, like when you start the camera app, you about to take a selfie or anything like that, or if it's looking for your face, how there's a little ring light notification. Now, real quick disadvantage. I wish Samsung would have implemented some type of notification light into the cutout. And I know they're working on it. And it's been said it's coming with a future software update. And there's also developers on XDA who already have an app that kind of does that, even though it has bugs. I just wish it was core functionality and I didn't have to go install nothing extra or wait for updates because it can't be that difficult to implement. And I'm just trying to think about the software engineers and developers at Samsung. They didn't think to make that a core feature, but whatever. I digress, back to the screen. The whole phone is sexy. I mean, it's getting to a point where all modern phones, if you, if, if you take two pieces of glass and slap metal in it, you really can't mess it up, but Samsung nails it, man. It, it feels premium, it looks premium. I never get tired of looking at it. A lot of times I take it out the case, even though that's dangerous, just so I can hold it and experience how, how good looking and premium it feels in my hand. The next thing I really love about it is the battery life. Even in the regular S10, I don't have the plus, so I don't have a huge battery, man. I still on average get between like, depending on how much I'm using it and how bright I have the screen, like anywhere between like four to six hours of screen on time and a battery this small. And that could be attributed in my opinion to one UI. I love One UI. I hated my Note 9 after I got the S10 until I had One UI on it because in my opinion, One UI is like almost there with iOS when it comes to like fluidity, when it comes to speed. So it's almost like you got this iOS level smoothness with all of these extra features and I really love that. One UI makes this thing feel so premium. I appreciate how fast and smooth and easy it is to use and how aesthetically pleasing on the eyes it is. I love 
one UI. So I guess that's my segue into talking about speed. Yo, I have literally had no lag on this phone. I'm switching apps, running multiple apps at once, having 20 browser tabs open while being on Instagram and all. like this thing flies with all of the RAM it has and the, and the Snapdragon, what 855 it got in there, man, this thing flies. I have not been able to get it to choke one time. Now listen, I don't play games on my phone. I got a PlayStation for that. So in day-to-day -day use, using it all day long, I have not come across one scenario, not one time where it slowed down, maybe a micro stutter here and there. The software experience, the whole speed of the phone, one UI, you can't really ask for much more. With the next generation of Snapdragons and Exynos processors, I mean, we're literally splitting hairs on speed. So if you're concerned about speed, the S10, you won't have a problem. The speakers, are literally the loudest I've ever heard on a phone. Now, that's not to say that they're the loudest ever, but they're the loudest that I've ever had on a phone of mine. Man, this thing blares like music, movies, all of that stuff. The speakers are just super loud. The call quality is great. Uh, I haven't had a lot of drop calls, but I am in a good signal area, so I really don't have that problem. But one thing that I have learned about the S10, and this is just all Samsung phones in general, the music profile, is super bass heavy and it, like even when you turn the bass down like unless you use some type of third-party app like power amp or something like that it's super super bass heavy to a point where i've had to turn i got an amp in it you know the whole thing in my truck um i had to turn that down because the bass output is just too heavy and too muddy from samsung phones just something i noticed now before i talk about cameras i do want to talk about some of like the little knickknack stuff so like the wireless power sharing i'm not into that stuff um, I'm never in a situation where I need to use my phone to charge another device. And even still, like charging something else besides a pair of headphones at 4.5 watts, I mean, a, 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 literally a snail can run faster than that. Now, there have been rumors that Samsung is supposed to be up in the power output from wireless power share, but again, I'm never in a situation where I need it. So maybe I can't speak for somebody who does need it, but like I'm always near a charger. And with the battery life on this thing, I don't really need to worry about charging it. And I'm not about to give somebody else my juice from my phone. Like I'm not, I'm not about to do that. Get your own charger. So I haven't had a chance to really test out the wireless power share. I mean, it works, it's gimmicky. It's cool to show your friends. I don't have an application for it. You already know it's water resistant and all of that good stuff. It's got a headphone jack, which is still a plus. We get external storage. I mean, all of the stuff we've come to love about Galaxy phones. Now, let me get into, since I've said all of this positive stuff, the stuff that I can't stand about it. And I'm probably skipping over some stuff. I'm probably missing some stuff and that's cool. Like I said, I didn't want to turn this into a specs video and all of that. That stuff but let me let me touch on the things i don't like now i did do a video on the camera on the galaxy s10 and i'll be honest i love the wide angle lens not it's not just the wide angle lens it's also like the hdr that they apply after you take a picture with the wide angle lens like the post processing is just killer on the s10 when it comes to the wide angle lens in my opinion the wide angle lens has been the killer feature of the s10 for me now the other cameras let's talk about them real quick the video camera is dope you can expect dope crispy video multiple frame rates all of that good stuff the new super steady feature is also clutch i made a whole video about that i'll link it right up there so that's the video side i'm not going to talk about the video side that much more because literally it just it just works you know what i'm saying if you want more control get an app like filming pro i think this supports the s10 but i might be wrong but anyways there's apps out there that can help you take advantage of higher bit rates and stuff like that i want to talk about people with the s10 and i gotta be honest i am disappointed in the camera with the s10 with the exception of super steady and the wide angle so let me let me just let me before you start dogging me out let me explain using a pixel or using a iphone you don't have to fumble around with extra apps you don't have to fumble around with extra settings to get a crispy photo or portrait why is it with the s10 i take pictures of people the s10 just won't turn off this super aggressive detail killing noise reduction i did a whole video where i compared gcam versus the s10 built-in camera the link is up there also if you want to check that out like it frustrates me because here's Samsung marketing this pro level camera, which I think is BS by the way. Pro level camera, cell phone sensor that big can never match 
a mirrorless or DSLR with a sensor the size of a stamp or bigger. As a photographer and a videographer, it pisses me off because it's not a pro-grade camera. Sure, it might be better than the average phone, but it's definitely not pro-grade. So let's just throw that out there. Back to people. So this noise algorithm reduction crap, you can't turn it off. You can turn off beauty mode. You can turn off scene optimizer, which it does pick out, you know, if you're taking a picture of a baby, it'll automatically soften the skin, change the color tone, X, Y, Z. It applies this, this, this noise reduction, which is in my opinion, just not flattering, especially being a dude. Like I don't need to have my skin all smooth and like look like a Maybelline model and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want that and I don't need it. And I should be able to turn it off. When I take pictures of people or anything like that, to have that messing up every single shot really irritates me. Why can't this superpower of Samsung get it right? And that's where I'm more so frustrated about the camera. I find myself using Gcam more than anything when it comes to taking pictures of people or night sight, because the S10 doesn't have that right now, even though it does have a similar feature and it's rumored it's supposed to get something just like night sight. It ain't here yet, all right? But I just don't like the S10's camera when it comes to people. Now, objects, landscapes, stuff like that, sure, not hard. But people, nah, this ain't it, bruh. And some people, especially women, probably are cool with the extra smooth and it applies to the skin. But for me, dog, you know what I'm saying? I like my blemishes and everything showing. You see my hands ass, you like, I'm a roughneck. And I don't want my phone taking that away from me. But again, I digress. The link is below if you want to check out the video comparison with Gcam. Side note, that video is like almost at 50,000 views for no reason. I don't understand it. The videos I want to go don't. And the ones that I don't expect to do anything are the ones that bl just blow up in your face. But whatever. The other thing I really dislike about the S10, and this is more so a problem with all of the, the, the recent Samsung Galaxy phone, is the edges, man. If you don't have a case on the S10, I can't tell you how many times I selected something by mistake, how many times I scrolled on something by mistake, I'll be watching the YouTube video and then click on another YouTube video by mistake and it was so frustrating. Even if you turn off the little feature and settings where it's supposed to decrease the edge sensitivity, listen, none of that crap worked, okay? And after I put a case on there, which I use the Ring K Fusion, it's like a $13 case in my opinion, like the best case for it. I'll show it to you real quick. I think I got some food on it or something like that, but you can see right through it and the edges is, is very good protection, very, very good protection. But the link is in the description. Uh, ever since I put this on there, the problem has been solved. And I guess since we're talking about like the whole case thing, let's touch on the fingerprint sensor. Now, let me throw this out there. I don't have top secret military plans on my phone. And yes, your phone should be secure. So I actually don't use the fingerprint sensor a lot. Number one, because when the phone first came out, the fingerprint sensor just, it was crap. And it's taken for them multiple software updates to fix it. Now, bravo to Samsung for listening to the people, making sure that the phone stayed updated, that they're you know, continually trying to address the issue, it does work a lot better now. But why would I do that when I can just turn on the facial recognition and lift the weight and it literally works just like Face ID? You pick the phone up and by the time you even realize it's looking for your face, the phone is unlocked. And that to me is enough protection. Again, I don't have government top secret files in my phone. I don't care about my wife going through my phone or nothing like that. So like, I don't need that super duper level of protection. Now for stuff like Samsung Pay, for stuff like making payments online and logging into websites, that's when I use the fingerprint and it, it typically works. I do find that it does have some type of trouble when my hands are like dry, but as soon as I put some lotion on, it works like boom, 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 boom. So again, I'm only using the fingerprint sensor when I need to log into something secure. Aside from that, the face recognition works way way better it's way more reliable like i can use facial recognition just for unlocking my phone and then i can use my higher level of security to fingerprint for when i want to log in and do secure stuff on my phone so that to me hasn't been a big deal and those are really the only two things that i can say are bad about this phone is the camera software and i'm not going to call it bad i can say it needs improvement and the fingerprint sensor and overall like you need a case to use it so i guess it's three things those are minor annoyances in a otherwise the best phone that you can buy with your money i'm not saying that this phone won't be beaten this year 
but I think so far it is the phone to beat. Now, do I regret leaving the Note 9? I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of things I missed that S Pen for. For example, like when I need to copy and paste and stuff like that, having that level of precision with the S Pen just makes life so much easier. When I'm using Lightroom Mobile and I need to adjust my split tone, having to manipulate that little dot with my big old pad on my finger is really annoying and the S Pen would solve that issue. However, Again, it's not a deal breaker. And I knew going into a S device that's not a Note device that I wasn't going to have an S Pen. So I can't really knock the S10 for not having the S Pen because it wasn't supposed to. We'll get the Note 10 for that, which when it comes out, I'll find some ridiculous way to justify selling my S10. Because, you know, then when the Note 10 comes out, the S10 is going to be inferior. Obviously, duh. So I got to get rid of it and upgrade, you know, that, that never end the cycle. But all in all, real talk, I think the s10 is hands down the best phone and i'm gonna throw this out there ever made so let's just get to the meat and potatoes final verdict i think if you're coming from a s7 a s8 or even a s9 i think it's a worthy upgrade do you need it no because those phones are still capable but i think if you're in the phones you're in the technology you like having new stuff then i think you'll be happy upgrading from even the s9 because in my opinion it's a huge leap forward having the software stuff the instagram stuff the adobe rush which we're still waiting on and all of the other stuff that's built into it the new screen the wide angle the wireless power share the speakers the charging all the battery life all of that stuff it's a leap forward if you have an iphone or any other device i think the s10 is the perfect device to get into android on now coming from a note 9 that's a little bit different the note 9 is literally right here with the galaxy s10 sure some things are different faster processor more ram stuff like that um the major thing will be if you want to live without the s pen if you're cool with living without the s pen and you can get five six hundred bucks for your galaxy note 9 and you only got to come out of pocket 400 bucks for s10 i think it's a solid upgrade if we want to call it that maybe lateral because the lack of s pen but i think it's a solid move nonetheless i also don't think you're really missing out if you don't upgrade so i think all in all, the S10 is the most complete device I've ever had. But I think you should go ahead and grab one. And uh, this will likely be the last video I do on the S10 because in my opinion, it's literally been milked to death and I'm ready to move on with content. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. If you're enjoying yours, if you decided to stick with what you had, or maybe you're waiting for the Note 10, which I am too, let me know what you think in the comments. Sorry this video was so long. So again, if you guys want the case I use, link is in the description. If you liked any of the audio you heard in this video, it all came from Epidemic Sound, copyright royalty free music. You can get a free 30 day trial, link is in the description. Go ahead and do that if you like music and you don't want to worry about getting copyright strikes on your channel. So that's all I got for you today, man. Make sure I share this video. Peace and chicken grease, Terry Warfield. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Peace!